Good morning, good afternoon, Science Castle Explorers. Welcome to the science lesson today. Today we're gonna to be talking about aquatic habitats and how to put together an aquarium. There are five tiny white teeth in the middle on the bottom and they're very good at chewing or grazing on kelp. Sodium, the little brown globes and the purple globes of chloride actually take up a lot of space. So we're going to go to Science Castle today and we're going to start with our story with our friends Mike and Maxie at the Science Castle and see what they're doing today. These animals have hundreds of tube feet and they look just like teeny tiny bathroom plungers. Now what we're going to do, did we have any more questions? Are we good to go? Are we ready to build an aquarium? Yeah, let's go build an aquarium. Scientists who want to observe a living thing throughout its entire life cycle will keep a creature in an aquarium where they can closely observe the entire life cycle. My name is Elizabeth Keller. I'm the owner, author, and creator of the award-winning uh, science website, Extreme Science. Look at all yeah, but beautiful, beautiful to watch. Lab mouse Maxie was jumping up and down on Mike's bed, yelling, Get up, Mr. Lazy Bun! How come you're still sleeping in? Well, let's go ahead and get started on putting the aquarium together. You've got several pieces here. This, most obviously, is the tank that you're going to put the water in. This animal is a type of snail, and snails and their relatives are often shell builders. <laughs> So everybody in the audience today should have a kit. If you don't have your kit yet, you can still order one, get it later, come back and do the video again. I'd like to welcome you to our Discovery Labs, our teaching classrooms here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Mike and Maxie couldn't believe their eyes. This talking fish was a new professor at Science Castle, or rather a very old professor. Now the way this one works is you have to look inside to see what the reading is. And let's see how the animal responds to having kelp in the water. There's another thing that I brought with me today that did not come with your aquarium kit, but when you go to the store to buy yourself a fish, you might want to pick one up. And that's a simple little aquarium thermometer. This one has been on a journey down into the deep sea. And because of the pressure, look at the difference. Yes, last year I took my students on a trip to the ocean. Now I'll take my little pipette and grab a sample of water from the other beaker. So I have a little piece of squid here, and when I put it in the water, you can tell that the animal senses that there is a meal nearby. We just put it in there and stir it up some, swish it around and rinse off those rocks. You also want to leave some of the empty shells because the empty shells that are abandoned by the snails who leave them behind get picked up by other creatures, like hermit crabs. Yeah. And Gabrielle, if you could spin to the side, they have a tail that is like a monkey. What I have here today are two samples of water. One of them is salt water and one of them is fresh water. You can see there's lots, lots of red in here. Lots of available oxygen in a fresh water uh, sample. The castle was empty and quiet. Mike opened the door to Professor Keller's office. We have lots of rocks that come all the way out of the water and go down to the ocean floor and there's lots of different kinds of creatures who live on these rocks. Once you get them clean, pour your rocks in there. <laughs> In the Discovery Labs, we have a lot of wonderful animals. My favorite is the California sea cucumber. But you know, something concerns me. I feel like the water in my bowl is getting lower. Fill that up. You can use a pitcher, a juice pitcher, to continually just add your water until it fills up. So it doesn't breathe here, it breathes through the rear end, which I think, well, students always think that's pretty cool. We may discover the mystery of how life on Earth began by studying them. The secrets they keep are indeed jewels to a scientist. 
but it doesn't clean it all the time. You will have to take it out and clean the filter itself every once in a while. And I'm going to put one in the water by the tentacles of the sea anemone and see if our sea anemone is hungry today. If you were to take a super close up look at the abalone's tongue, this is what it would look like. You want to get the other end of your tubing. Put it on there, make sure it's sealed on tight because you don't want it to slip off. Ha 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 ha! Everybody heard the familiar evil laughter. You stupid old fish. I made the hole in your aquarium and you'll be out of water soon. Mike and Maxie were sitting on the floor looking at each other not knowing what to do. Mike? Any ideas? I can't believe the situation is hopeless. There must be something we can do to save Professor Qua. Well, the shell on this animal, an abalone, functions much like a hard hat. You'll see them open up and all their antenna come out. So Maxie asks, what do we need to do in order to solve the problem? We need a new aquarium where a fish can live, but unfortunately, we know nothing about fish habitats and aquariums. Now, once you get this set up, you want to let it run for about 24 hours before you put a fish in here and then have the lid steal on there securely. This is a dust cover to keep dust from building up inside the aquarium. We have a great website, www.montereybayaquarium.org. 